free mails. We never get mails. Let's go get some more. not here with us. Mmm! so good right now. These are blueberries. These are true blueberries. Here we are in late summer, early fall in Alaska. It is a beautiful time of year. We've got some cooler temperatures. The leaves are changing colors. There's wildlife around, and it's also a great time to harvest from the land. So that is exactly what Eric and I are doing this morning. Yesterday, we got back from a spruce grouse hunt, which was really productive and fun. Now we are harvesting these mushrooms, which are known as hawkswing or scaly hedgehogs. So we are a little bit new to these mushrooms, but they are so delicious. We have been cooking them up almost every night and we have something in store for these ones. We're also harvesting some rose hips today, so we're going to finish up with those. These buckets are full and we're gonna mosey on back to the cabin. gotten all our supplies ready and we are going to be getting all of these mushrooms cleaned and processed. It's a really simple thing to do. Um, they're not very dirty so I usually just brush them off and then we're going to be chopping them or slicing them. Eric and I have been harvesting mushrooms here for a few years and our favorite way to eat them is fresh but of course you know you can't eat this many they're not going to store that long so our next favorite way is dried so that is also very simple we just air dry them we have this neat little rack you chop them up you lay them out in that air rack and under a week they are dried and ready to be stored just like this little jar here. They shrink down a lot, so this is very condensed in here. You don't need to use that much uh, when you go to grab them and add them to a sauce. We typically will rehydrate them in like milk first before we add them to whatever we're cooking, but this has been one of our favorite ways to eat mushrooms over the years. We're jazzed about trying something new today though. We are going to be canning pressure canning these mushrooms. And from what I've read, it's a really simple process. We're just gonna like clean them, chop them up again, and get them in the jars. And with the rose hips, Eric and I are also trying something new. When we harvest rose hips, we usually wait until a little bit later in the season when they are riper. They get a little bit sweeter after a frost, and we've yet to have our first frost here although I anticipate it's coming very soon. You can see that they are firm and they are loaded with seeds right now. You can eat them just as is like this. They're not my favorite that way. I know Eric does snack on them. One of my favorite ways to 
eat rose hips is actually to process them. They have a very tomato like essence and they turn out fantastic when you're making like ketchup or barbecue sauce. And that's usually why we wait a little bit later in the season to process them. Right now they are like a orangey red color. So they do turn a much deeper red wine like color as the season goes on. These guys were just picked at this age though because we want to try air drying them. We have never done that and I would love to have these for tea over the winter. We already started on a batch and they're shriveling up and drying up just great but we're gonna get these just cleaned up rinsed and then we're gonna also add them to that mesh rack that we have. So this is five, six, seven and a half gallons? Yeah, seven and a half. Stunning. Got a lot of mushrooms to cook. This is the first part of the canning. We have to cook our mushrooms for about five minutes in some clean water. And then we're gonna take them out and strain them. And we're gonna get them into some clean jars. It's a hot pack method. So we're gonna have hot, clean jars. We're gonna put hot mushrooms in and we're gonna put new, fresh, clean water on top and pressure can them. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> Holy smokes. Maybe we can set a little timer for five minutes or so. Put a lid on that. I think I can fit like one or two more. You think that's five? Five, six. I don't. There you go. It's my turn. They... It's been a while since we double stacked. Mm, I think that one fits seven. That would only be 14 and not 16, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we'll figure it out. I can't remember. Looking good. These are gonna go in the pressure canner for 50 minutes at 11 pounds. While the mushrooms are canning, we're gonna get started on some tomb, which is a Lebanese recipe. And it is probably my absolute favorite condiment. It's like a whipped garlic butter. And Eric and I recently pulled our garlic up from our old place. It didn't do that well. We had to pull it up early. As you can see, it's kind of sad looking. It is not going to store for us because we had to pull it early. So we need to use this in some sort of recipe. And this is perfect because it requires a lot of fresh garlic. We're gonna get these all cleaned up and show you how we make it. Yeah, it's really, really raw. Yeah. Kind of it's 
Well, the sun has since joined us and making tomb is pretty much as simple as canning mushrooms. It's just a hair more complicated, but if you've made mayonnaise before, it's a similar process. We are emulsifying oil into the garlic and we're gonna use some kosher salt and lemons to kind of help aid in that process. What you wanna do when you first start is throw a little bit of garlic in. We have a food processor. I'm not sure if it would work with a blender, but we're gonna do a food processor today. We have also done this process with an immersion blender as well. Once you have your garlic in there, you add just a little bit of the salt to kind of help get it coarser and kind of break everything down. And then we slowly introduce the oil. So just a twee bit of oil at a time. And then you alternate from the lemon juice back to oil and so on. And the whole process can take a while, but you end up with an awesome garlic spread when you are done. And Eric's gonna fire up our generator so we can power our processor here. Well, this stuff looks amazing. I didn't have faith in our food processor, but it came together, it probably took under 10 minutes, and I used an entire bottle of this grapeseed oil. They say you wanna use like a less flavorful oil than olive oil, so that's what we're using. And it is just as good as I remember last time. So we are gonna make another batch and we're gonna get this stored up in some little mason jars, and then we're gonna be freezing them. Dreamy. It's so good. <laughs> it's like worth crying about. Ended up with a bunch of tomb for the freezer and this batch right here, we used the grapeseed oil, but in the last batch we ran out of grapeseed oil, we ended up using a little bit of olive oil in there and you can definitely taste the difference. We actually prefer the one with the grapeseed oil. We're gonna label this one a little bit differently, probably use it more for cooking, but we're gonna celebrate tonight. We're getting hungry, put some tomb aside. We're starting a campfire, we're cooking dinner. Good. It's a little bit windy out here, but all the food turned out absolutely awesome today. And we're gonna carry that over to dinner. We got quite the menu. So we're gonna be using the spruce grouse that we harvested and some mushrooms. And we're making shish kebabs tonight. We're gonna cook them over an open campfire. Picking the BBs out of the grouse meat. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna chop these grouse breasts into just two little chunks, kind of like that. Pretty excited to have shish kebabs. These little skewers, I found these in one of the drawers in the cabin that we moved into. So we're gonna be using those. And then also when we are coming back from our spruce grouse hunt, we found some mushrooms that I think we've harvested maybe one time. Uh, and this is a really good one. This is called Shaggy Mane. So that's one right there. It's a nice big one. We're gonna do garlic, shallot, we're gonna do the hedgehog mushrooms, and then we're gonna whoop up a sauce that we're gonna base these with as they're cooking. Do some pieces.
kind of hard to believe that we've never had shish kebabs here in Alaska and these are definitely some special shish kebabs with the grouse. Eric put a marinade of some barbecue sauce. This is some brown mustard we made and then spruce tip syrup that we made earlier this year and we have yet to try it so I'm thinking that this is going to be the perfect uh, occasion for it. Share my piece with me. It's okay. The dogs will eat that. That's good. Tomb. We're gonna taste it before it even hits your mouth. Mmm. That's really tender. Good. Yeah, that garlic's so like. What garlic? That garlic? This garlic? No, the garlic I cooked on there. It's like immature, so it's really intense. Here, you can throw these pieces on if you want them cooked a little more. I don't they're pretty good as is. You don't actually mm. think that's like extremely good meat? It's really tender, yeah, it's really good. You didn't like the hedgehog? It's good. I'm having a... We've not had shish kebabs for freaking like a decade, so I'm having like just all these like flashbacks or something. <laughs> oh, I don't change. I don't think I'd put the mustard on there. I don't really care for the mustard. That's fair. But the barbecue sauce is really good. Like really good juicy. And with the tomb, it tastes like you're eating um, prime rib with horseradish. Does anyone eat shish kebabs like this? Yeah, it must be. That's how you eat corn. Mmm. Yeah, the grouse is my favorite part. Mm. 